everyone, it's Justine with another video tutorial today and today I'm going to be creating this sort of broken up window card if you could call it that and I'm going to get started by making a card base. It measures 11 by 4 and a quarter inches and I just fold it in half so the card base itself measures 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches. Now I have my top folding card and what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to grab a card panel that measures four by five and a quarter inches and I'm gonna add some masking tape here to the sides to mask off that white area of the card base that I need. This is going to help me add some distress and ink without having any distress ink on the sides that are going to be shown when I add the card panel later on. So I'm gonna grab a couple of colors of ink here to get started and I'm gonna start off with abandoned coral. This is one of my favorite colors of Distress inks and I'm going in a circular motion and as you notice I'm starting off my card panel on the craft mat itself. The craft mat is slippery which helps me build my circular motion and I'm just going to add a little bit of color there to my card. I do not want to add the color directly on without going off the mat first because I'm going to get harsh lines. You don't want to put any pressure on your hand when you're doing this. Next up is ripe persimmon, so I'm blending that in with the abandoned coral. The colors are quite similar, but the ripe persimmon, it's not persimmon, it's persimmon, sorry, uh, and it is uh, or more orangey in tone. Then I'm going to finalize this with the squeezed lemonade. This is one of my favorite yellows because it's really bright and cheerful. If you wanted more of a real, a real yellow, you could say, like a real sunsetty look, then I would try mustard seed. So I'm just filling in any white spaces and blending it into all of the colors to make sure they blend nicely together. And I'm only, as you can notice, blending and distressing a, about a two inch area. And the reason being is that my window, if you saw the card in the beginning of the video, is just going to be cut out to show this area. So I'm just going to take off the masking tape and you'll see that the sides here are, no, are all white. And that's going to help with the card panel and getting a really nice clean and simple look. I ripped off a couple of extra pieces here of the tape that were not inked because I'm going to use them later to attach my die. Next I'm just going to grab my card panel again so that my card base I just set off to the side. This measures four by five and a quarter as I mentioned and I'm using the border stamp from Lawn Fawn and I'm just going to set this up so that I'm using the same die so it's going to have the same curve and I'm going to cut out about a one inch area to one and a half inch area on my card panel. And you'll see, uh, I know it's kind of cut out on the video here, but you'll see as it goes through machine what I mean. So I now have these three pieces and I'm only going to save the top and bottom, the middle I can toss away. So I now have these here and I have my card base. So I'm just going to see what it looks like when I add these to my card. So when I add the two pieces, you'll see that it gives me this nice little banner with a nice pop of color. And that's where my sentiment's gonna go. So I used a pencil to trace where the white pieces are going to lay and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment and the sentiment is from So Susie Stamps and it says when someone you love becomes a memory the memory becomes a treasure which is really nice and next up I'm going to stamp this dandelion stamp absolutely love this and it's really great for sympathy cards and things like that I stamped it on both panels and I wanted it to kind of have that space in between but in the end I didn't actually like it being on the bottom half and I ended up replacing it so I'm adding some 3D foam tape all over my card base, being sure to leave out the area around the card that I want to leave in white. I'm going to erase my eraser or my pencil marks here, take off the double-sided tape, and then I'm just going to attach my panels here. This is when I realized I actually didn't like the bottom piece. So I just made a new piece, and I think that looks really much better. So I hope you enjoyed this card tutorial today. All the supplies used are listed below in the video description or on my blog. Here you can check out my blog in the supply list by clicking up top. On both moving videos, you'll see videos I made last week. Or you can click the YouTube subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you need any other information, just head over to my blog or leave a message in the comments.